Hey, what's up? This is Dr. Corey Glenn with Transcendental Education, and I was going to show a case here that uh, had some issues with the CT scan. Uh, so obviously our lab does a lot of guided surgery uh, cases for customers, and one of the things we see pretty frequently is CT scans that end up needing to be redone due to various issues in the scan. And this happened to be one of them, so I thought I'd use it as a learning opportunity. Uh, but this was going to be for a double arch, uh, you know, fully guided case placing five to six implants per arch. And one of the things we noticed when we opened the scan is that there was kind of not so great of an image quality on the patient's lower right. So if you look at this image, you can see that this is just a really kind of muddled image. You can't really make out the, the bone contour very well. Uh, and it, it seems to be pretty bad in multiple spots, like especially right here. You can see there's this doubled image. You actually see this outline of a mandible right here, right? And then you see uh, an identical outline right out here. Okay, so anytime you see that, that's a good indication that there's movement going on during the scan. Now, usually when we see movement in a scan, it's typically from the patient getting bumped by the CT machine as it circles their head. Uh, and usually what you'll see when that's the case is that, you know, they're, they're still and getting a good image and then right up towards the midline where the thing circles just directly behind them, they'll get bumped and you'll end up seeing a double image right there at the midline. Now that can go one of two ways. Sometimes you get bumped and especially if you're using head positioners, it will oftentimes, as soon as it clears the shoulders, put the patient back into the same place that they were to start with. And oftentimes we can deal with that. You know, if it's just an isolated area like that, then sometimes that will work. However, what we noticed on this one is that it, it basically, the patient moved and then never got back into the right position, okay? And so there's a, a couple of ways that you can tell if that's happened. Okay, first of all, you're looking for those double images. Uh, if you see a double image, you automatically need to kind of stop and back up and reevaluate if that scan is really gonna be useful before you release the patient, because it's, it's always a bummer to have to get that patient back to, to redo a scan when you could have just caught it on the front end. Uh, but, you know, typically if you see that the movement is from the patient getting bumped, you'll usually see that double image on both the mandible and the maxilla, okay? Again, if it's an isolated bump and then they get back into the right position, that we can work with. But if they get bumped and then they stay in that new position, that scan is not going to work. So oftentimes the question is, how can you tell? Usually you can tell that from... Uh, one, just again, the quality of the CT scan. If you see a big broad area like this where you've got just a really low quality image, uh, that's probably one that's going to have to be redone. They just, they're all over the place. They're not staying in the right position. Uh, the other way that you can tell is actually by the stitch of your STLs. Okay, so if you think about your STLs, uh, they're not really affected uh, to the same degree by patient movement. You know, it's taking a bunch of small isolated images and stitching it together, and generally those are really, really accurate models. And so we would expect STL models from any of the more modern intraoral scanners, or certainly from a desktop scanner, uh, to be super accurate. And so if you go to stitch those STLs into the CT, and you can't get a good alignment no matter how you try. You know, the software can't do it automatically. You try it uh, manually, you still can't. Maybe you even used a scan appliance and you just can't get things to align uh, like you would see right here. Okay, you see how this STL is significantly off from where the, the bone is. Again, that STL I know is accurate. And I can go to the patient's opposite side and you can see this is a great alignment. Everything is tracking perfectly on the patient's left side. And then you get over to just past the midline and about right here, you start to see that the quality is deteriorating. I no longer have a distinct outline to the mandible. It's just a big muddied mess right here. There's not really any distinct uh, cortical plates or anything and it just continues to be that bad as we go uh, further across the arch and that stl is just not aligning again we're significantly off here and we tried to stitch this a dozen times it doesn't get any better any time when you stitch this and so what that tells me is that 
patient was perfectly still through the scan up to about right here. Then they got bumped and either got moved and stayed in that move position or they just continued to move. Now what's unique about this one that I've not really seen before is usually when you see that movement, it's gonna be uh, the same across both arches. But here, it kind of threw me for a loop because I was looking at the maxilla and this one's got a great stitch, right? This looks uh, pretty well aligned all the way around the arch. You can see the tissue boundaries are the same, but I get down to the mandible and it's uh, not the same case. You know, it's a really rough rendering. So what that tells me is that it wasn't the patient's entire head moving, it was just their mandible. So maybe they swallowed during the scan, uh, maybe they just quit biting down, who knows, patients do funny stuff sometimes. But uh, it's pretty evident to me though that this patient uh, had their overall head still and they just moved the mandible during that. Now part of why I can tell that is because if I look here in the same cross section, we've got no double image on the maxilla, a great stitch, okay? And then down here on the mandible, look at the double image. Right, you can see there's this outline, and then this double image has the same outline, but it's a good four or five millimeters off. Okay, uh, you can see that elsewhere. Let's find another spot. Um, okay, this is actually probably the worst spot. So this is probably while it was actively moving. You know, I can see an outline here. I can see the same outline here. So my, my guess is that this outline out here is when the patient's mandible was in the correct position and staying still. And then they opened, which caused the mandible to drop back, giving this double image right here. So why is that an issue? Well, not only because I can't see what's going on. I don't know where the actual bone contour is on this jaw, which is gonna obviously cause problems with planting implants with any degree of certainty. But secondly, if you're doing this as a guided surgery, you've got to have a perfectly clean CT rendering because especially on a full arch case that's going to be a bone level guide, it's uh, fully dependent on the accuracy of that CT scan because we're going to use the cone beam rendering to do uh, bone segmentation and then guides get made on that bone. So essentially what you would have if you tried to segment this is a stretched elongated mandible that's not really true to what their their true anatomy is which means any guide that you make on it is not going to fit properly and you know even if a doctor asked us to to just ignore this and proceed we, we wouldn't do it on this case because uh, we know for a fact that one we can't with any degree of certainty plan the implants in the bone and two that no matter what kind of guide we make them, it's not going to fit. Uh, it's just simply not going to be accurate. And there's no point in us wasting our time or the doctor's time and money in doing that. Uh, really, the best solution here is just to get the patient back and do a rescan. Now, with that said, the best option is to, to try and avoid this in the first place. So there's a few things that you can do to help avoid uh, these problems of movement during the scan. First of all, uh, really simply just stress to the patient how important it is that they be still as a statue throughout the entire scan. Uh, it's easy to kind of get in a hurry and it's routine, you know, we take these scans all day every day and we just forget the details of that. But make sure your staff tells them, listen, it's very important that you stay super still throughout this entire scan. Uh, secondly, make sure that you have the patient standing up really good and straight, okay? so head up and elongated, shoulders down. One of the things that can help with uh, getting the shoulders down so they don't get bumped by the machine is, you know, you've got the handles you hold on to during the CT. If you'll actually have them cross their arms and grab the opposite side, that pulls their shoulders downward, uh, which is gonna make them less likely to get hit during that scan. Uh, a few other things, try to use head positioners. So most of the CTs now come with a head positioner. Uh, that will be something that kind of clamps down, usually on the temple area or the forehead, and just helps to stabilize the patient. Uh, if your machine does not have one of those, uh, try to come up with one. Rig up a strap or do something because that really is going to help a lot. Um, 
And then again, in this case, since the patient didn't move their overall head, they just moved the mandible. I think it probably could have been avoided by just stressing to that patient, don't move a muscle during this. Um, since this is going to be a redo on this scan, what I would suggest to the doctor is to go ahead and have that patient bite completely down into occlusion. And as opposed to using the bite fork to bite your front teeth on, because it's easy to slide around and, and get out of position with that, have them close all the way into occlusion and instead use a chin rest because that chin rest uh, is going to keep that mandible from wanting to open. Uh, the head stabilizers will come in and they've only got to make it through, you know, 20 seconds of the scan. So anybody ought to be able to hold still unless they've got, you know, a medical issue like Parkinson's or something. Uh, but anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of what I learned from this case. Um, but, you know, make sure when you take these CT images, uh, any of us who have one of these have, have been in this position where you're in a hurry, you've got a dozen rooms filled, you're running and gunning, and you might just say, hey, just release the patient, I'll look at the scan a little later. Avoid doing that, especially if it's for a, a guided surgery case, right? Because this would be really easy to catch uh, while the patient is still there, and if you see it, you need to redo it, and again, stress to the patient all those things. If you don't evaluate that scan before the patient leaves, though, now you know, you're know you kind of stuck. You, you don't really have another option uh, other than to just get the patient back and, and redo it. You know, So really review your images before you let a patient go so that you can avoid having the headache of having to do that. Uh, so anyways, hope you found that helpful, and uh, we'll talk to you later.